Hello everyone. Today we will be talking about the Barton decarboxylation reaction and the Barton McCombie deoxygenation reaction. The Barton decarboxylation reaction is the one that we'll talk about first, and it is basically just the radical decarboxylation of an ester uh, giving us an alkane. So let me draw this out. This right here is our Barton ester, and it reacts with the tributyl tin hydride. So this is our tributyl tin radical, and it came from the hydride, which comes from a radical initiator, AIBN, to make that. We won't show the mechanism right now. And basically what happens is the radical here combines with an electron from our thione, and then this electron swings over here, this electron swings over here, and then we have an electron over here. And that brings us to our radical, excuse me, radical carboxylic acid. And we have, what happens here is the radical electron comes in here, and this comes in here, and that is our decarboxylation. So we lose our CO2, and then we get a radical alkane over here. What happens over here is this is our leftover, so this was our ester, this is our, left, our leftover Barton product, and basically the whole thing that's driving this reaction is this sulfur tin bond, because it's so strong. So this is just hanging out, and then the way that we get this isolated as an actual alkane, not as a radical, is we have our tin radical producing agent, and we have a radical reaction right here, giving us our CH3 methane, and then we bring this product, another radical, to have the reaction run again. The next reaction that we are going to talk about is the barton mccombi deoxygenation reaction. And it is a little different from the decarboxylation reaction because we are deoxygenating over decarboxylating. So let me draw. Here, we have the sim we have the same tributyl tin reducing agent as we do in the decarboxylation reaction. So this is also a very similar starting material, so it's easy to get confused, but something that helps me is to note that you don't have a CO2 that you can eventually lose here like you do in the decarboxylation reaction. So that's something to definitely look out for. So when initiating this reaction, we have the radical reaction between the tin and the sulfur, and the sulfur tin bond like the other decarboxylation reaction, it's the same thing that drives this reaction along because that bond is so strong. So after that radical goes here, this, this electron goes there, then we have a radical electron go there, and that leaves us with our methane radical and our thioester that we have left. So our methane radical, kind of like in the other reaction, will now combine with the tributyl tin hydride so that we can regenerate that radical and that we can end up with our desired material. So we get our methane and then we get another tributyl tin radical to go through that reaction again. I kind of gave some pointers in the last example to figure out if it's going to be a decarboxylation or a deoxygenation reaction. So I just want to give you an example right now to see if you can figure out which one is which. So something that doesn't give us the most information is the fact that we have our tributyl tin radical because we know that's in each reaction. Something that does help us is that we have our Barnester over here, which is specific to the decarboxylation reaction itself. And not to mention that if we're looking for CO2s, 
right here is a CO2 that can leave. So if this reaction was to undergo the decarboxylation reaction, we would assume that we would get just the substituent at the end, which is what would happen if we start if we did the deoxygenation reaction, but that's not what our starting material would be because we wouldn't have the Barton ester. So with the decarboxyl decarboxylation reaction, this is how the mechanism would go. Our carbon dioxide will leave and we will end up with our substituent radical. Which can later be combined with the tributyl tin hydride. To give us that. 